This is MAE 170, Control System, Lecture 6 by Triad. Poles and zeros plot is an important concept for control system. For this transfer function, G, is equals to, S plus 3, over, S plus 4, S plus 5. If we set numerator, S plus 3, equals to 0, then solve for S. We have S is equals to negative 3. This negative 3 is 0 value. On this graph on the right side, the x axis is real value and y axis is imaginary value. The 0 will be denoted as a circle at negative 3. To find poles, look at the denominator, set it to 0. Here we will have s equals to negative 4, and s equals to negative 5. Over here on the right side, we will denote poles as x. We write x on negative 4 and negative 5 in the real axis. Moving on to the next transfer function. g, is equals to, 4, over, s square plus 4. For 0, we look at the numerator. 4 is not equals to 0. Therefore, the zeros for this transfer function is none. There is no circle on the graph. For poles, let's say the denominator to 0. We have s square plus 4, is equals to 0. s square, is equals to negative 4. Therefore, s is equals to, square root of negative 4. This equal to, square root of negative 1, times square root of 4. This give plus or minus, j, which is the imaginary number, times 2. Or in other form, we have 0, plus or minus, j times 2. On the right graph, we have pole as x, x is on the imaginary axis at 2 and negative 2. For this last transfer function, g is equals to 2, over s square, plus 2s, plus 2. Again, the zeros will be none. The denominator is equals to 0. Here, we have s square, plus 2s, plus 1, plus 1, is equals to 0. s plus 1, square, plus 1 is equals to 0. Therefore, s plus 1, square is equals to negative 1. Or s plus 1, is equals to plus or negative j s equals to negative 1, plus or minus j. On the plot, we will be the poles, x, as complex number. The real part, x-axis, will be negative 1. And the imaginary part, y-axis, will be plus or minus 1. Now that we know about zeros poles plot, we can use the plot to tell how damped the system is. If both poles are on imaginary axis, the system is undamped. If the system is critically damped, we have repeated poles on the real axis. If the system is underdamped, we have two poles that are complex numbers that are not on real or imaginary axis. If the system is overdamped, we have two distinct poles on the real axis. Let's look at this first order ODE. We have dy over dt, plus a, times y of t, is equals to, b times, f of t. The input is f of t, and the output is y. To solve this, we do Laplace transform on this ODE dy over dt, will become, s times y of s a times y of t, will become, a times y of s. Finally, b times f of t, will become b times f of s. Group y of s together, we have y of s, times, s plus a, is equals to b times f of s. Now the transfer function is equal to output, divided by input. Therefore, transfer function g is equals to, y of s divided by f of s. This equal to b, over, s plus a. To get a physical meaning out of this transfer function, we divided everything by a. The numerator becomes b over a. The denominator becomes, 1 over a, times s, plus 1. Assume b over a is equal to k. And 1 over a is equal to tau. We have, k over, tau times s, plus 1. Here k is the final value, and tau is the time constant. If we take this transfer function and make a graph in time domain, we get this graph. As you can see, k is the final value of the function. If time goes to infinity, we get k value. For time constant, tau, 
it's the time the system takes to reach 63% of K value. There are also overvalues about the system we want to know about. For this graph, the target value is K. The graph goes up above the target value, K, then oscillate but smaller magnitude, until it converge to final value, K. The first time it reach K value is call rise time, TR. The time it reaches the maximum value, is called peak time, TP. The difference between the maximum and the target value, K, is called overshoot, the time it takes for the system to settle down, stable at K value, is called settling time, TS. Here for first order ODE. The rise time is estimated to be 2.2 times the time constant, tau. The settling time is estimated to be 4 times the time constant, tau. Moving on to second order system ODE we have this transfer function, g, is equals to, c1 over, s square, plus c2, times s, plus c1. This is the general form but it does not have any physical meaning. Therefore, we rewrite this in the form of omega n square, over, s square, plus 2, times zeta, times omega n, plus omega n square. Here the omega n is interpreted as the natural frequency of the system and this weird symbol, is called zeta, and understand as the damping ratio of the system. The rest of the parameters can be derived from these two important values. The settling time, Ts, is equal to 4, over, zeta times omega n. The peak time, Tp, is equals to pi, over, omega n, times square root of, 1 minus, zeta square. Percentage overshoot, Os is equal to, exponential of, negative pi times zeta times square root of, 1, minus zeta square. Everything times 100. Damping ratio, zeta, is equal to, negative natural log of percentage overshoot, over, square root of pi square, plus natural log square, of percentage overshoot. Finally the rise time, tr, can be roughly estimated through linearization, as 2.16 zeta, plus 0 0.6 over omega n. For this to work best, we want the damping ratio, zeta, to be in range from 0 0.3 to 0 0.8. This is the end of lecture 6.